Welcome back to Home Theater Review. I'm your host, Jordan Andrew, and today I'm gonna to be reviewing the Platin 5.1.2 Weiss Soundson Wireless Speaker System. The Platin Weiss Speaker System is by far the easiest speaker system that you'll probably ever set up. The package includes a wireless center channel, two front wireless speakers with upfiring woofers on top, two wireless rear channels, a wireless subwoofer, and a wireless hub that speakers connect to wirelessly, as well as your phone and the WISA app, making it a complete 5.1.2 setup that's perfect for any modest home entertainment system. The hub also has HDMI and optical connections that you'll need to connect to your TV. Since there's no speaker wires to connect to a receiver or amplifier, all you have to do is connect power cables to the hub and each speaker, and then plug each speaker into an outlet. Connect the hub to your TV via HDMI or optical, and you're pretty much done after that. All that's left to do is to download the Weiss Soundsyn app from your mobile app store of choice, and the app will pretty much do the rest. Make sure you're connected to Bluetooth, and the app will find your Weiss compatible system and connect. Inside the app, you have some basic choices for customization and configuration. You can change your audio source from optical or HDMI, adjust lip sync, you can turn bass management on and off, adjust your mid range, bass and highs, adjust volume levels for each individual speaker, change your speaker configuration, and there's even more options for tinkering under the advanced setup. However, for those of you who are used to some type of room correction to adjust for any room nulls or fixed dips and peaks that you might have in your room, you won't find that on this system, so you're pretty much stuck with any acoustical issues that could color the sound in your respective space. You can adjust speaker distances under My Zone in the Event Settings tab, which should help if you're experiencing time delay issues. The design of the Platinum Monaco 5.1.2 is sleek and modern, with a black matte finish that blends well with any home decor, and the matte black finish should diminish light reflecting off of your speaker back onto your display or projector screen if you're using this with a short throw. There are also mounting options on the bottom of the speaker if you want to mount the speakers to a speaker stand. However, I would like to see some keyhole mounts in the future iterations for more mounting options if you want to mount these on a wall for a much cleaner look. So I tried this setup in two different rooms. The first room was my bedroom and the second was my living room. And in both scenarios, there were pros and cons. Pro. So being a wireless system, you can pretty much place these speakers anywhere you want, which is great if your room is less than ideal for a surround sound setup. Con. Now, you might have noticed that I used air quotes for wireless, and that's because while yes, this speaker system does not require a single speaker cable to work, in fact, you won't find biting posts at all on any of the speakers, but each speaker does require power since there's no speaker cable running to an amplifier to power your speaker. So you'll have six power cables that you'll need to plug into an outlet or power strip, five power cords for your five speakers and one for your powered subwoofer. That is a lot of outlets. And I'm not sure that everyone has six outlets ideally placed for a true surround sound setup. If you're building a home theater from the ground up, then you can plan ahead and add an outlet exactly where you'll be placing each speaker. But if your room is already finished, then you might run into issues trying to find six different outlets. So finding power for my surround sound speakers in my bedroom wasn't an issue for me, but still, I'm not sure it would be that easy for everyone else. Once I got everything set up though, Having a wireless setup in the bedroom was a much needed upgrade over my Vizio TV speakers. The sound was pleasantly enveloping, and since it's a bedroom, speaker placement is more than likely gonna be closer to you, which does yield some better results for detail and clarity. And yeah, in my bedroom, I had no issues with that. I was pleasantly surprised at how crisp the vocals were coming from the center channel, and the surrounds provided great atmospherics, and depth was very good as well. There were many times I caught myself looking around my bedroom because sounds seemed to be emanating from beyond the speaker's placement or where there were no speakers at all. However, the system does have some flaws. Going back to not having any room correction options, there were times when watching a movie that the center channel seemed to be drowned out by the other speakers, 
regardless of how much tinkering I did in the settings. It's also worth noting that as you increase the volume to higher levels, detail and clarity does start to deteriorate. It's not horrible, but with such small drivers, the system starts to struggle the louder you drive it. But if you're using this in the bedroom, then you probably won't be listening at extreme levels anyway. Moving to the living room, the pros again were pretty much the same. You can place these speakers anywhere with the caveat that you have a strategically placed outlet for every speaker, which in my living room setup was more of a con than it was in my bedroom since I have an open layout. Ironically, because I do have an open floor plan, I have an outlet on my kitchen island on the right side of the couch, as well as an outlet on the outer wall of the left side of the couch, nearly adjacent from each other. So again, I was fortunate to have outlets close to where I placed the speakers, but in my living room, that means that speakers are basically in the middle of walking areas, and if you have children or pets, then they're probably gonna knock these speakers over at some point. If there were keyhole mounts, then you could just mount each speaker to a wall, and that wouldn't even be an issue. But as far as listening in the living room, the sound was pretty much the same in my bedroom with a few caveats. I didn't have as good of an experience in my living room as I did in my bedroom, which is no surprise because we're talking about a much larger open space, so Naturally, you're gonna to need to turn the volume up more, which goes back to having smaller drivers. If you're gonna be putting this in a living room or a large room with a large open floor plan, then the small drivers are gonna to struggle to keep up. But I wanted to bring this up because I'm not sure what the wattage is on each speaker. Which brings me to my next bullet point, object-based audio. So the left and right speakers both have up-firing Atmos speakers on top. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to test the Atmos functionality to work properly. I was able to get Dolby Digital Plus for streaming and local content on my Plex server via Bitstream on my TV's audio and by selecting direct in the SoundSyn app under the audio mode. And if I change the audio profile to the movie setting, I was able to engage Dolby Surround, which activated the up-firing speakers for Atmos. And this configuration did make the soundstage sound and feel more expansive and lively with noticeably improved atmospheric effects. Jack. You're investigating the Sokol project, yes? Yes. Sokol was funded during the fall of the USSR to develop a small new battlefield nuclear weapon invisible to all radar, undetectable. You can imagine the repercussions of such technology. However, I never really got a sense of overhead effects like I do with Dolby Atmos on a dedicated receiver in my home theater setup with in ceiling speakers or on-wall speakers. Again, I didn't really expect Atmos to be as effective with a system that has smaller drivers. However, your experience may vary. And if you're wondering, I used Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, and Plex for all of my content testing. Let's talk about the subwoofer briefly. So I've always had some great subs from either Shoe Research or SVS. The smallest sub that I've owned is my Shoe Sub with an eight inch driver that I still have. And that little guy can hit surprisingly hard, even in my open four plan living room. The Platin Sub, it's small, like exceptionally small. So if you're a bass head, then this sub is probably gonna underperform for you. It isn't a bad subwoofer, it just doesn't have a lot of output for blockbuster movies, especially if you're placing this in a mid-size to larger size room. But again, if you're buying a system like this, you probably aren't concerned with having subterranean bass that's gonna shatter your walls. That being said, in the right size room, the bass is sufficient and does add some low extension to action movies and TV shows that call for it that you would never get with TV speakers. In my bedroom, I was able to get more output from the sub than I did in my living room. Again, it didn't get deep into the sub bass register like my eight inch sub, but I didn't expect it to anyway. Also, it's worth noting at times, I did notice that I was able to localize the sub, but that might not be an issue for everyone depending on your setup and placement. However, in the living room, which is a much bigger open space, I could barely notice any output, which tells me the driver size and wattage on the sub 
probably isn't a lot, hence why it struggled in a bigger space. I'd like to see Platin develop a wireless module that allows you to use your own sub of choice that you could integrate into the system if you really want that deep bass for movies or just release a sub with some bigger drivers. So who is the system for? I think if you're a non-audiophile or you want a quick wireless setup to put in a bedroom, a guest room, a kid's room, or a flex room where minimalism, insanely fast setup time, and wireless connectivity is a priority, then this WISA 5.1.2 wireless system would be perfect for you. Just make sure you have enough power outlets. Or if you're somebody who wants to upgrade your TV speakers, or you're looking to improve your audio from something like a soundbar, then this 5.1.2 WISA system is gonna give you more versatility in speaker placement, and you'll have more drivers placed around the room, which will give much better separation and add to the realism of your movies. And the WISA technology performed flawlessly. I never experienced any audio dropouts, nor did any of the speakers lose connection at any point in my listening. Overall, the Platinum Monaco 5.1.2 with WISA SoundSyn is a good option that provides a massive upgrade from your TV speakers or basic soundbar audio experience. For those looking for a simple, no hassle wireless setup that literally takes only minutes to complete, the WISA SoundSyn technology makes setup easy and convenient, while the sound quality and design are a massive step up for anybody looking to enhance their movie watching experience with clear and crisp audio, especially for dialogue. At the time of this review, you can purchase this 5.1.2 system for $14.99 However, through April 2nd, you can get $200 off, bringing the cost to $12.99. And I'll leave a link in the description where you can purchase if you like. So that's our review of the 5.1.2 Platin Wireless System. Let us know down in the comments what you think and if this is something that you'd be interested in picking up. Again, I'm Jordan Andrew for Home Theater Review, and we'll see you in the next video.